Hi, we're back. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about organizing your database. By the end of a few networking sessions, you will have a stack of name cards and a growing one. And if you don't know how to organize them, you'll be lost in your follow-up. What I typically do is when I sit down and organize my database, first of all, that stack of name card, I divide to at least two stacks. One, what is relevant to me, and two, what is not relevant. You know, you sometimes meet people who are just absolutely not relevant to anything you're doing. Okay, so that goes into the irrelevant. It's not like you're not going to send them an email. You will. I'll teach you how. But at this particular point, they're not exactly in your radar. So put them on one, one side. Now you have a stack of just relevant people. The question is relevant for what? Relevant as prospects, as immediate prospects to your business. Relevant as potential um, business partners. I call them strategic alliances. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that word, but strategic alliances for me are people that I can affiliate with to grow the business. So for instance, um, let's say I work with banks and because their target market is also business owners, I work with banks to provide added value services to their clients. So if I meet someone from the bank, I may not be interested immediately to coach the people in the bank. However, I am interested in working together with the bank to add value to their business owner database. You see what I mean? So they are relevant, but they're not direct prospects. So I, I, would, I would separate them. Like for instance, here's my stack of relevant direct prospects. Here's my stack of relevant potential affiliates or strategic alliances, okay? Th things like that. So I, I typically split them up again. Now, we go to each of those uh, lists, like the strategic alliances and the prospects, and I want you to kind of separate them into hot, warm, cold. You know, there. I don't know what your conversation was with them during the networking, but you know what I mean. There's some. Some of them give you a sense of, yeah, it's just another meeting or two, and we're we're we've got a deal. Okay, either they're going to use your products or or uh, they're going to work with you. They're hot. Okay, and then there's warm people who need more information, people who you need to get to know for a while. It it could either be warm from your end, meaning you're not so sure if you want to work with them, or warm from their end, they're not so sure if they want to work with you. And then there's the cold list, which is people who is not really interested. They're relevant. They could be a potential someone that you want to work with, but they're not really interested at the same time, at, at right now. Okay, so you've got hot, warm, cold. And the reason I want to split it that way is because it really prioritizes my follow-up. If, if my category was just A to Z, you know, well, um, someone named Adam is going to go on top of uh, someone named uh, Bob, for instance, you know, it doesn't really help me because that's just an administrative way to categorize A through Z. But what I really want is to choose ways to organize my database so that I can focus my follow-up. Okay? Um, Many other ideas that um, I can think of other people use, splitting up by industry, splitting up by business names, etc. But to me, what's been really advantageous for me is, again, splitting them into relevant and non-relevant, and the relevant ones, splitting them up into relevant as what? As, as a prospect, as a strategic alliance, um, as potential employees, okay? So you never know what you'll find in your networking event, but categorize. All right. So once you've categorized, what do you do? Ideally, if you have a CRM system, fantastic. Now, I know many of you are not there yet. Don't worry about it. It took me about five years to invest that in my company, okay? So I'm not here to say that if you don't have a CRM system, you can't follow up. That's a myth, okay? That's an excuse, actually. Now, what if you don't have a CRM system? Use Excel. So what do you do after you've put it into your database in Excel or your CRM? Well, you plan your follow-up. First of all, the irrelevant. The irrelevant people, I'd like you to at least send them a note that it was very nice to meet them. You'll never know who they know. You'll never know what happens next. They can one day become relevant. Now, on writing the note, many people write generic notes. Dear all, and then they'll have like five or six or ten names on the to list, which is a complete email sin. Okay, but they'll do that, you know, and, and I still see that going on. Oh, I'm not on the to list, I'm on the CC list. Now, just a little bit about email etiquette. 
If you want to blast, which is unadvisable, but if you do it, put them on the BCC list. So we don't have to be looking at 20 other people's emails. That's really against email ethics. However, what I prefer to do, if I decide to use email, what I prefer to do is to send an individual email. So if I go Bob, right? I meet Bob and I say, hey Bob, because I know Bob is a casual person. Hey Bob, great to meet you at the networking event this week and uh, it was really fun to talk to you about skiing. You know, I'm glad you're an avid skier and uh, good luck on that uh, training program you're having on the skiing and look forward to see you some other time. Okay, not a relevant, but quite a social email. It was just nice and you leave Bob with the impression that you remember him, he feels good and everything like that. And you might gain a friend. I mean, what's, what's wrong with that? <laughs> you know? I mean, love people for goodness sakes. Now, the other way I like to do it is also send a postcard. Okay, and it doesn't have to be extravagant. I mean, we have postcards in our business designed with our logos and uh, we have 14 points of culture. So each postcard represents one point of culture. I think that's kind of unique. It doesn't cost much to send it. Um, the reason I do that is because, you know, when people zig, you zag. You know, nowadays, let me ask you, how many postcards do you get in the mail? None. Right? I, hardly any. You know, unless you've got a great relative who sends you a postcard every time they travel. I don't get stuff in the mail like that anymore. Everything's through email, SMS, Blackberry, things like that. So if you are sending a physical letter or a postcard or a card, you know, those, you know, thank you card, whatever, whatever you choose, it doesn't have to be designed. Preferably it is designed in your logo. If it's not, it's okay. It could just be a generic one. That is going to be such a showstopper. You're going to get like unique uh, uniqueness instantly okay so follow-up methods if you have to do it by email fine but don't blast the world do what if you met 20 people yeah send 20 emails you know what it'll take you 30 minutes max and you don't have to you don't have to send a long email it's just like hey it was great to meet you one two sentence by you know that's it if you get um, if you decide to go into unique, go into postcards. Now, that's talking about the irrelevance. What about someone who is cold? Cold or warm, typically I start adding value, okay? Cold or warm are people who may need more information or um, are just thinking about it, but they're not in any way ready to make a decision. And these are the prospects or the affiliates that you wanna work with. So I start adding value, for instance, like, Hey Jim, it was great to meet you and it's so nice to meet someone from this company, such and such company, because, you know, I see a prospect for us to work together in the future, adding value to your clients. Let's say you're talking to a potential strategic alliance who is still warm or cold. I remember we talked a little bit about uh, the challenges we have in our industry right now doing this and that. And I found this link on the internet and I thought it might be fun for you to watch it. Okay, and send them the link. It could be a conversation starter. It could be picked up in a, in, a, in a coffee meeting sometime in the future. But it certainly shows a couple of things. Number one, you are an expert. You are a person with resources. Now, in order to do this, you need to have resources, meaning that you need to be regularly watch, watching um, value-added videos. You need to be... Um, reading articles on, on the websites, um, you need to read newspapers, you need to read business or relevant industry magazines, things like that. Of course, you've got to be in the know, okay? That's the prerequisite. So if you are already that type of person, it makes it all the more easier for you just to send value-added material to them. Now, of course, what that'll do is that'll generate conversation. You can also say, hey, what do you think? I'd, like to, I'd love to know what you think. Okay, so that will get them to, to reply back to you. And it may end up from hot to being warm or warm to being, from uh, cold to being warm or warm to being hot. I mean, you can start transforming people that way. What, how do you follow on your hot leads? Now, for your hot leads, obviously, something was communicated during the event that makes them really eager to want to work with you. So it's simple. It's just arranging a time to follow up 
either personally, I don't know how you follow up in your business. Is it a, is it a telephone call? Is it a, is it a teleconference with a team or is it a meeting, a presentation? Depending on your sales process, it's just taking them on to the next sales process. So for instance, you know, hi, Andrea, it was great to meet you. And, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm so excited that we can do things together here and there because, you know, you've shown interest, blah, blah, blah. Now, just to, just to solidify the concept and just to make sure we roll out in an appropriate manner, would it, would it be possible for me to take my team to meet you and your team on Thursday um, next week? Would you prefer 9 o'clock or 3 p.m.? Okay, so it's as easy as that. Again, it's, it's really just to follow up and seal the deal. So those are some of the things that I'd like to advise on on following up and organizing the database. So when you are um, organizing your database, keep in mind, hot, warm, cold, it will help you prioritize your, your follow-up. When you are following up, keep in mind, try to be unique in your follow-up, not just always use emails, and make it personal. And depending whether or not they're hot, warm, cold, make sure that your follow-up is advancing them to the next um, level, okay? So with that, um, the question I have for you is, what do you need to improve in your follow-up system and your database system? You know, some of you who are very people-oriented and not going find this one completely boring. And don't worry, I feel the same way because I'm also people-oriented and not going. I'd rather go meet people than think about what I'm going to do on my Excel. But it is so, so, so important because if you don't get this right, your follow-up is going to be very, very difficult and untimely. People are going to say, well, she said she's going to follow up. I never heard from her. Or you're going to lose potential uh, partners or potential prospects because you forgot about them. I mean, if you're going into several networking nights in a week or several even in a month, it's very easy amidst all the things that you're doing in the office to forget to follow up. And if you forget, I would say, if you forget to follow up a person on a prospect stage, you know, if, if I'm trying to buy something from someone and they don't follow up on time with me, here's what's going through my head. I'm a prospect and they're late in their follow-up. Wait until I become a client. I wonder what's going to happen. Okay, so what's the likelihood of, that they're going to continue working with you if you can't even follow up correctly? Okay, so with that, please take this one seriously and um, see what, what you can do to improve your follow-up and database process. All right, I'll see you in the next video.